people do it, this in other places and it works i do that i did that for two over two years yeah two um, years rewind re- 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 rewind i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> welcome to namely 90s the podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones google and y2k join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right. You're listening to Namely 90s. I'm Andrew. There is Brandon. That's me. uh, We welcome you to the show. Uh, I'd like to hit our social media and website stuff first. So you can find us online at namely90s.com. And for your convenience, that's either with a 90S or spelled out as 90s. We sprung for the two domain names. Thank you, uh, Google, for that. So uh, and, organic. Yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, very. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at namely 90s. And that one is with a 90s. Uh, but yeah, we, we decided that we were going to keep the intro a little bit more organic, you know, and and um, your intro, so, you're welcome to do with whatever you want. with it. Well, so, you know, I was just I was just talking about the last episode and I apparently I'm really narcissistic because I actually like listen to the full episodes after they're recorded, even though I've heard them. Do you listen to them? Well, I kind of have to edit the video and <laughs> audio. So I, I, <laughs> when I'm done producing them, I don't listen to them now, but I no, listen to them weird. at least two to three times before. Um, yeah. And honestly, publishing. at the end of the last episode, I, I like, I thought it was so bad. I almost wanted to re record it, which is, Weird, but I'm pretty sure it's because I was in a food coma and I kind of hated hated myself at the and conclusion. And also, it would have been unfortunate because we didn't have time to re-record it. <laughs> right, right. But actually, I listening to it, it it was good. So I, you know, I'm glad I'm, you're happy I'm with it. Can I keep it open? The editing was so good; it just took all of my awful energy and made it into something that was listenable. I mean, if you looked at the audio files like I did, it you did talk less than usual. But I, I, you know, I, I would say that was the food coma. I don't say anything ever. I, I, I'm going to say more. I've resolved I, I to do, say more. I do talk a lot, and that's probably because I'm the one that has been doing the research. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm here to, to just do my thing. But, hey, you're uh, the talent. You show up. I, I will. I will. <laughs> the talent. Yeah. I will produce. I will produce and edit and do whatever while I have all of the free time in the world. Is there t- is there talent anywhere near this production? I think. I think a little. I think a little. Yeah. I mean, I think my ability is to steal. Uh, uh, video clips off the internet is not <laughs> something regular people can do and just fly under the radar of the uh, copyright mm-hmm. folks. Yeah. You got to stay under 15 seconds. <laughs> uh, did my Red Bull plug. I'm holding it up in front of the camera. Yeah. Not uh, a sponsor by the way. Not brought to you by Red Bull. Thank mm-hmm. you. Oh, sponsor anyway, us, Red Bull. Um, shall we? Shall we what? Have we Moving. started yet? <laughs> I <laughs> move into the show, I guess the actual part of the show. People uh, are probably bored of this, but we're doing organic. Damn it. Yes. And we've this was it. such organic witty <laughs> banter. Uh, I also, I hope you liked the, uh, the random, um, outro out, outtake clip at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, anyway, what yeah. is it? Uh, so we're going into September, 1994. Yeah. You haven't uh, even so, said yeah. it yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. This is the September, 1994 episode. So, we're going to get a Brandon who's going to give us the rundown. Can we re-record this episode? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm considering. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is. This is actually our 20th episode. So thank you for those of us that are those of you that have been here the entire time. And those of you that are just finding us now or even have gone back and started listening to previous episodes because you're very well, you're you're the people recording while recording this so we appreciate it yeah and, and funny enough my my co-work old co-workers 
fiance was actually like she got home and he was listening to the podcast. Yeah, which is awesome. Shout That's out to awesome. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Hey Jeff, yes. thank you for listening. What's up? All right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, let's let's travel back, shall we? To what was it September? <laughs> <laughs> September. September. 1994 on the ninth, uh, we have the super NES version of mortal Kombat two being released with all blood and fatalities left intact, which is the first yes. major release on any Nintendo console at that point to have such content. Uh, on the 12th, Frank quarter crashes in a Cessna into the South lawn of the white house. I believe that was a big deal. Um, a, on the 14th, MLB team owners vote to cancel the rest of the season and the World Series, continuing the strike with the Players Association. And the 26th, Switzerland bans racist propaganda, asterisk, uh, having, <laughs> having visited Switzerland in the last few years. The French side's still really racist. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I saw a poster that had... a. Uh, Middle Eastern immigrants on it that said, do you want these people owning guns in your neighborhood? I was like, what the fuck? Are you sure this isn't America today? Uh, <laughs> That's what I it mean, sounds like. It felt like America. F- yeah. Yeah. It, it did. It did feel more like home being in a more racist section of uh, another country. <laughs> Gosh. Um, and then on the 28th cats, the musical uh, had their five, thousandth broadway performance actually i saw that in 94 i think all right did you bring that one up because you know i have a story about that um yes oh dang it you said something about racist people and then i forgot what to, what i was going to say in relation cats. to that cats racist cat no um i cannot remember okay well anyway continue uh, on television, we have uh, on the first, the International Film Channel, or IFC, debuts. On the third, the TV, the children's TV show, VR Troopers, debuts on Fox Kids. Uh, on the fourth, Fox covers their first NFL game with NFL Sunday. Right? That's yep. crazy. So yeah, much typing in the background. On the Sorry. fifth, uh, Extra, the celebrity news yeah. Gossip rag. Uh, premieres on the 10th. Uh, the Magic School Bus debuts on PBS. Yes. Uh, on the 12th, Party of Five debuts, which I like, I've probably never seen an actual episode of, but it starred Nev Campbell, Lacey Chabert, who is season one, Meg Griffin, um, on Family Guy. Uh, Jennifer oh, Love yeah. Hewitt was a main cast member from season two to season six, and Jeremy London was a main cast member in season four through six. Uh, on the 18th, Ken Burns' baseball documentary uh, airs on PBS, which was big at the time, I believe. Um, he did the Civil War documentary, too. Yeah. He, he's the, he just he did a lot of weird, like, really boring documentaries on PBS that everyone loved. Um, on the 19th, ER premieres. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just gonna uh, say that. <laughs> on the 21st, Touched by an Angel premieres. And on the 22nd, Friends, the TV series that no one's heard of, premieres. And on the 24th, the cartoon show Reboot airs on ABC Saturday programming. Wow, this is a great episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then in, in the box offices, uh, on the 9th, the next Karate Kid uh, starring Hillary Swank came out. Um that's technically the Karate Kid three or four. I don't remember. Uh, 16th Time Cop on the 23rd, Saw Shank Redemption. And on the 30th, Ed Wood. Wow. Yeah. Did we talk about Saw Shank at some point? I f- uh, no, not specifically. No. Weird. No. No. Have uh, I seen it? No, of course not. How have you? Know, it was like on TNT. Oh, I'll get to that. I only know it based on how Family Guy told the story. Because I feel like they did boob. something with it. Yeah. That's where exactly. the came from. I know, yeah. actually. I uh, that. On the Billboard charts uh, for the fourth week in September, at number one, we have I'll Make Love to You by Boys to Men, which came in from August 27th and will continue through all of November. 
Uh, number two, Stay, I Missed You by Lisa Loeb. We talked about that before. Number seven, All I Want to Do by Sheryl Crow. Oh, yeah. Number eight, Can You Feel the Love Tonight by Sir Elton John from The Lion King. Uh, 11, we have Don't Turn Around by Ace of Bass, which I swear, if you just heard the song, you would recognize it. Well, okay. I, I will listen, listen to it after. I can put it on my phone now because I have my phone with me. Yeah, but then uh, I don't want to have to edit that out. Uh, number 15, we have I Swear by All for One and not the country person that you knew it from. And number These 25, so we have Come to My Window by Melissa Etheridge. Dude, these are like all the songs that I can just like remember listening to in my parents' car on Star 101.5 with Kenton Allen in the mornings. Kenton Allen. They're finally retired. Yes, you brought that up last time. We had this exact, I think you said that literal sentence. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, listen, all I want to do is have some fun. Till the sun comes up over Santa Monica Boulevard, uh, okay? I I, I get the feeling (laughs) that you're not the only one. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, so it sounded like you wanted to talk about something. Well, I mean, oh gosh, there's so many things there. True. Um, Um, One thing I do want to talk about, um, racist propaganda. (laughs) And (laughs) strangely, that got me thinking about the state of current affairs in the United States, right? uh Okay. Because I made that comment about how that's how the US seems. So I actually, I'm at home alone right now. The wife and kids are visiting family. So. I made myself a big batch of curry and uh, started drinking white wine and just started watching movies. And um, what kind of curry? Uh, tikka masala. It was okay. good. I guess okay. it's not technically curry, is it? But Indian food, anyway. Yeah, no, uh, I was because uh, I, I had Japanese curry for dinner. Very so. good. Uh, anyway, so I decided to watch movies. First one I ended up watching was that new one with Mark Wahlberg. Do you know about that one? The one on Netflix. Yeah. No. It's good. You should watch it. Uh, but then the, the second movie I watched was Contagion because I'd never actually seen that before. The 1997 In, uh, Contagion? No, no, the, the 2011 oh. the, with Lawrence Fishburne. Gotcha. Uh, uh, the guy from The Matrix, not not me, Neo, Morpheus. The other guy. Morpheus. But um, my wife never wanted to watch it, but I, I thought it was apropos considering the whole COVID thing. And uh, actually, it had a resurgence and I watched it and boy, has that movie aged well. Not to be confused <laughs> with say. resurgence. Right. But seriously, like the phrases, social distancing, you know, the, the virus, the unrest, um, you know, all that stuff, it was just aged very well. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a really good movie. I liked it very, very much. So, so anyway, it just reminded me that it was like, it just the U S man, we're all <laughs> screwed up right now. Uh, I mean the entire world's screwed up right now. If yes. you're talking in terms of contagion, but aren't you glad it's not that virus? My gosh, I haven't seen it. Anyway, uh, I found it very entertaining. You should watch it. I'm not big on disaster movies. Fair enough. I, I mean, yeah, it's not not my wheelhouse. And if I were to make a segue to something that was in my wheelhouse, um. It would have fit perfectly right here. But you don't have one. I mean, uh, it's not a movie. It's more a reboot. Okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So you don't you don't remember this show at all. No, not not. Yeah. No, it's a children's cartoon show. It's the first computer graphic animated cartoon. Uh, It was made in Canada and it aired on the ABC set. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, ABC Saturday morning vlog. Sorry, did was that you? What? Uh, I thought I heard something. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, carry on, sir. We can always edit that out. <clears throat> okay. Um, and yeah, it's so uh, it's set inside of a computer, um, and all the all the characters are like sprites, I guess, of um, uh, of actual functions. There's a the main character is uh, a guy named Bob, and he's a guardian, a computer guardian. Uh, he's like a, so- a security software system, essentially. And he uh, falls in love with this girl named Dot Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're gonna you're gonna like these. Um, and he fights the evil hexadecimal, uh, and a com- and her brother, a computer virus named Gigabyte. That's and, awesome. And then uh, Dot has a younger brother named Enzo Matrix of all things. And the f- uh, so what happens is the users uh, send in these games into the into oh they're in the city of Mainframe and oh the, my these, gosh. G- these uh, purple cubes come out of the sky and uh, it's Bob's duty to enter the game uh, and then reboot and he turns into a character an NPC character in the game but that which the user is playing against and if you lose the game if Bob or anyone that's stuck in the game loses they're all dead <laughs> this you know I'm looking at the pictures and the blue skin is really freaky. Th- that's Bob. Uh, the green skin dot. I don't then, like that. And then uh, I think it's the season two finale. Enzo falls in love with a actual AI that's living in the game uh, and ends up having to. I think something happens where the, the, they lose the game. And so he gets uh, sucked out into cyberspace or something. Oh, and lovely. <clears throat> co- comes back as a like teenager and uh, cause he started as like a kid, uh, some somewhere down the line. Anyways, I just, it was, it was a really good semi serialized CG animated cartoon and uh if anyone else remembers that hit us up on uh on our twitter because i'd be down to talk about drop us a line yes indeed um what else uh you said you've never seen the sawshank redemption no no i have not tim robinson morgan freeman it was on tv okay so i know the i know the actors tnt bought the tv rights to air it in 1997 and i'm pretty sure they haven't stopped playing it since then (laughs) I don't think I've turned on that channel since 1997. Yeah, that was my joke. Um, Wait, is it? You said TNT? Yes. Like, sorry, I'm not trying to watch the basketball playoffs like 24 seven. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> so it was a box office disappointment. It earned only 16 million during its initial theatrical run. Uh, and it has had a budget of 25 million. And for those of you that don't know, the usual metric to judge a success of a, mu- of a movie is uh, double the budget uh, because companies usually spend about the same price as the movie budget on advertising. Um, so, but it got multiple awards, including seven Academy Award nominations, which okay. resulted in a th- theatrical re release that combined with international takings increased the film's box office gross to 58.3 million. Ooh. And yeah, and over 320,000 VHS copies were shipped throughout the United States. And uh, yeah, on the strength of its award nominations and word of mouth alone. <laughs> It That's be, pretty amazing. Yeah, it became one of the top rented films of 1995. So literally, you're the only person that did not. <laughs> As usual. Uh, yeah. That's very on par for me on oh. message. Yep. Uh, uh, that's, that's because I was busy watching Michael Crichton shows such as ER. Millennium. Oh, Yarn? <laughs> ER. Oh, ER. I, I didn't realize that was a Michael Crichton show. Funny enough that uh, I actually Michael Crichton's Facebook page uh, shared a thing today about how ER debuted 26 years ago at this point in time. Mm. And uh, I think the the coolest sort of tidbit about that, I'm a total Michael Crichton junkie. I mean, I just anything he had written so good. He's dead now. R.I.P. Michael Crichton. Um, but at that time, he was the he's the I think he's the only person to date to ever have had a number one book movie and TV show all simultaneously. Uh, Stephen King. No, I, I don't think Steve, I not never simultaneously. Hmm. Michael Crichton. I think it was Jurassic Park ER and I don't remember what it was, but there's a combination of the three he had a number one book movie and show all at the same time, which that, is super cool. Yeah, that's impressive. I was just trying to think of the it miniseries. If it came but, out, I mean, it a, ran for gosh, ER ran for what fifteen years, yeah. And I've, it's a show that I've watched like over and over and over again. I mean, I can just watch it from start to finish. You have mentioned, and, it. and you, I don't get by what you mentioned that in college, you uh, <laughs> just continually marathoned it. 
Yeah, it, it ended up taking up 10 days worth of my quarter and I got like the best grades I'd ever gotten, which was strange. Um, but now it's like the the show that I measure all other medical shows by and it's always just a, just a horrible disappointment. Like all the medical shows on TV right now are literal garbage. I just, uh, I cannot stand I mean, them. Grey's Anatomy and Chicago oh. Med, so... Well, everything I like, I just can't. I don't know. Like, nine, we already did everything one, like three times. Fox. Yeah, like they did every scenario. Like who's doing other scenarios? But there's um, there's actually kind of a cool one that's on NBC that I might actually consider watching. Animal um, practice. No, it's about this guy who like he's a, uh, like a a Syrian war refugee, but he's a doctor and he comes to the U.S. and has to like repeat his training. And oh, yeah, I it saw seems kind of cool. I think um, I saw that preview. And then of course I was a big fan of house. Like medically it was a disaster. It had nothing to do with real life, but it's lupus. it was super entertaining. It was never lupus except the one time it was lupus and Hugh Laurie is like an amazing actor. I can't get over it. <sighs> wow. Uh, so when you said you didn't remember your, man crushes uh I didn't, we didn't talk about man crushes did we uh celebrity crush celebrity well i didn't know that men were allowed <laughs> fair enough <laughs> that's weird uh, um anyway uh so what else would we have on that list you know uh, about er probably not i mean i remember that one of the doctors one of the main doctors that wasn't george clooney the balder one uh he was he was goose in uh, top gun that's right Um, he did not appear in the remake or the uh, second uh uh, the sequel of top gun unfortunately because he died (laughs) in the first he died of oh i was gonna say i was gonna say six he died of cancer in season eight of er (laughs) no Nope. Uh, no, he, the, as you've never seen Top Gun, the top or Tom Cruise's character is doing some fancy flying and is forced to, um, he, something fucks up. So he's forced to eject the canopy, but the canopy doesn't move out of the way all the way when, uh, Goose's ejector seat goes. Okay. So just put him just, in a flashback. That's what you, you just put him in a flashback. Uh, it's true. Uh, they probably couldn't get the money for that. That's true. Yeah, he's a big time actor now. Yeah. I um, you know, being in the cast of the librarians. Yeah, so that's Was that him? No, it's a No, that was no no that was a different is, I don't doctor. know if it's Wiley or Wild. Noah Noah Wiley, the guy who played John Carter. Yeah. yeah. Um but the uh and then of course, as we know, uh George Clooney appeared in that show. That was his first like really big role before he became a big <laughs> movie star. Yeah. Then who's paying the bills? Hollywood kid, Batman. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, I, it's um, a great show. My favorite thing is like, if you look at any actor's resume or or filmography, mm-hmm. almost everyone has been in that show. That's uh, the cool thing about it. Well, uh, I, I I liked when we when I brought up uh, Kirsten Dunst, I was like, oh, she's in this random episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Generation, and you're like, Next oh yeah. Generation. She was also in ER. I'm like, what? She had a recurring guest role in ER, yeah. Uh, yeah, with, with George Clooney primarily. He was the uh, actor that she primarily shared screen time with. So, hmm. um, Speaking of mega smash hit shows, why don't we talk about Friends? Unless you want to save that for the end. Uh, I figured that was the end. Um, well, we still have about eh, 10-ish minutes to... N- no, I meant... So I think we just no, I meant... Babbled. That's what I have for the end. Oh, Okay. And I wasn't quick enough to say party of five before you said, Frank. I don't know anything about party of five. Neither do I. Mean, I. I just good. know that it's, I just know Alicia Schubert was on it. And, uh, and I know that she's relevant because she was in that galaxy quest movie with, uh, Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Um, Joey from friends, Matthew Lawrence, Matt, LeBlanc. I, uh, Matt LeBlanc. I, <laughs> I, uh, I did want to go back to cats for a second though. Oh yeah. You said you had a story. Well, so when I was in high school, I took my high school girlfriend to the Everett Historical Theater to watch the local production of Cats. Oh, wow. <laughs> I never saw the local production of Cats. <laughs> and and I remember it, cause when it starts, and I don't know what they want on Broadway is like. I'm assuming it's the same way, but I was just mm-hmm. like sitting in the seat looking at the stage and some freaking guy in a cat costume comes up next to me. And I'm like, good God. <laughs> You know, like it scared me. And then they were like coming down from the, so they were like climbing down from random areas up in the, like the, the rafters or something like that. It was super freaky. I don't know. And I just get crap from my wife. Cause I've never taken her to a musical. Uh, <laughs> so. How have you not taken her to a musical? 
because they're garbage. <laughs> uh so yeah that's i'm pretty sure that's how cat starts in every iteration um sorry my my like i told you my camera uh shut off thank goodness the movie was recording. such a smash hit <laughs> yeah that did everyone not end well. hated the movie oh so funny um let's see so actually give me one second while i do I need to vamp over here? Yeah. Could you vamp for a second? Uh, let's see. I feel like I just want to read the Tell lyrics. Tell me what, what, what was do. what was your favorite? What was your favorite part of the Cats musical? Even though you uh, st- the end <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you, when I got to leave. Uh, that's my did, point. You did not enjoy memories. Uh, all alone in the moonlight. I don't remember. This was in two thousand six, maybe. Yeah. I mean, this is like. I don't even know. Man. Okay, but I, uh, you may not know this, but I had the cat soundtrack when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> I was actually hopeful that the cats movie would be good, but then I why saw am the I the trailer. guy with a bunch of cats? That's my question. That's true. Uh, <laughs> well, it's like, oh, come on, I have like a whole bushel of cats at my freaking house. <clears throat> uh, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. He shares a name with you, Lloyd. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's the name, Andrew, that he shares with you. Wait, are you are you back now? No, I can't get my stupid thing off my stupid phone. Um, so Cessna crashed into the lawn of the White House. Um, this sounds like the beginning of a bad joke. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think now it would just be like exploded out of the sky by a surface to air missile. I feel know? like it, it was supposed to be. Yeah, I just, you know, with with uh, the increased security, the no-fly zone and whatnot, um, mm-hmm. that, that's definitely, I think it would just be exploded immediately, or they would just, like, snipe the guy from the roof of the White House. Okay, good enough. A.K.A. the dictator's palace. <laughs> All right, sorry, everyone. <laughs> I uh, I lost my, um, my recording device due to overheating. Um, Whoops. Yeah. Uh, so, friends... Um, what was your favorite episode? Oh, how could you even ask that question? Um, I would go content. with, I would go with the one, the teeth whitening episode where Ross gets his teeth like outrageously whitened and they glow in the dark. Um, the one where, and they're all Ross episodes. The one where Ross keeps getting one side of his body tanned in the spray tan because <laughs> he keeps turning around at the wrong time. And then uh, the uh, other great one is the one with the dirty girl where Ross is going over to this girl's apartment mm. and it's just so messy. That was Rebecca oh my gosh. Lane. When I first watched that episode, I I mean, I laughed so hard. I I literally had trouble breathing. I almost p- pissed my pants. It was so funny. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it's a tremendously good show. And it's another one we just watch over and over. It just doesn't get old for me. Well, I know a lot of people say the humor is kind of like, you know, not that great. Like, whatever. I don't care. I don't want to ask you. Uh, and it hasn't aged well either. Like, uh, like Ooh, any, no. any, any 90s comedy. It's heavy on the homophobic jokes. Oh, it's super homophobic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. And then, uh, all right. Who's your favorite character? Chandler, for sure. Because I feel like I have a similar sense of, of humor as to him. <clears throat> but yeah, he's my favorite. And uh, do you feel like Ross or Joey was a be- better match for Rachel? Because there, there is a great debate about this online. Conventional wisdom mm-hmm. says Ross, but I just don't see that happening. I don't know. Like he's too brainy and not good looking enough. Did you? But then did, Joey's like too stupid. I don't know. It's. I feel like there needs to be someone in between. You feel like she should have found someone else. Probably, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then um, I heard there was going to be a friends reunion, but not like a show reunion. Just like the cast is reuniting for something. Yeah, I'm not sure what what how I feel about that necessarily. Yeah, and uh, HBO Max is taking the streaming rights to yeah, the show. Yeah, we watch it on there. Oh, yeah, HBO uh, Max. Yeah, okay, get it. Uh, dang it. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, my wife has it. She uh, watches. Well, she got it for. Um, oh, boy. What was 
Game of Thrones hmm. and just forgot to cancel it apparently, but now we have it. And occasionally there's good stuff on there. It happens. Oh, it's a dog barking. That's what I keep hearing. Um, okay. Well, do you want to take a BuzzFeed quiz and see which friends character we are or always let's do uh, it. I sent you a link in the chat. God, I'm in there. All right. So we are going to figure out which friends character we are. Question number one, pick a color. Well, I'm green all the way, so I'm going green. I'm blue. Wow. Then we get to pick a movie. Oh, wow. Good ones. Yeah, I used to read those off. So we've got Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Wet Hot American Summer, My Best Friend's Wedding, Ratatouille, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Love Actually, The Goonies, and The Godfather. And I'm going to have to go OGJP. Uh, I'm going to go with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, favorite season. Mm. Not of friends, of weather. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And those seasons would be winter, spring, summer, and fall, or autumn, if you're pretentious. What are you going with? I like spring because uh, it's not cold, but it's not unbearably hot. I'm going, you know, west side of the state, west side. summer. Here, eh, summer. I'm a fan. Uh, pick a song. You've got A Friend in Me by Randy Newman from Toy Story. Biz Marquis, Just a Friend. Um, we're going to be friends by the White Stripes. I already hate the theme here. Can't be friends by Trey songs. Uh, my best friend by Tim McGraw with a little help from my friends by Joe Cocker. Your best friend by queen. My best friend's girl by the cars or the same song with a little help from my friend by the Beatles. <laughs> um, boy, uh, I'm going with the cars. It's a good song. Uh, as much as I love the Biz Marquis song, uh, I, I karaoke uh, the Joe Cocker version of With a Little Help from My Friends in Switzerland once and did all the, the John Belushi uh, spasming on the floor. So, yeah. So on a Friday night, you can be found either on a date, wondering what your ex is doing, working, hanging with your kids, drinking with friends at a party, sleeping, dancing in a club, making dinner, and watching a movie at home or playing board games. Uh, typical Friday night for me during quarantine sounds like making dinner and watching a movie at home. <laughs> That's literally what I did last night. It was kind of nice. I haven't done that in a long time. I mean, on a Friday night, my kids are probably asleep. So I'm going honestly working a lot of the time. Hmm. <clears throat> Pick a power. A superpower. Invisibility, time travel, the ability to magically write hit songs, super strength, the ability <laughs> to fly, teleportation, the ability to read minds, the ability to breathe underwater, or night vision. Um, I'm going super strength for obvious reasons. <laughs> Where the hell? They don't have super speed. Okay, uh, so next one. Pick a bird. A crow. I'm going to go with the ability to fly on the last one. A peacock. A chicken. A duck, big bird, a turkey, an eagle, a penguin, and a parrot. Good law. God, how long is this thing? Uh, That's what oh she said. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with a penguin. Oh, crap. Uh, I'm going to go with peacock. Shout out to NBC. I'm actually going to change to an eagle because a penguin, I'm sure, will give me Joey. Pick a fantasy series. Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings, Twilight, Game of Thrones, The Hunger Games, and Star Wars Click. Yeah, Star Wars for me as well. Uh, would you rather date Don Draper, Olivia Pope, Liz Lemon, Jesse Pinkman, Carrie Bradshaw, Tom Haverford, SpongeBob SquarePants, Daenerys Targanian, or uh, Ellipses, Rachel? So, boy, Slim Pickens. I'm going to go with Rachel. To quote Jeremy Clarkson, uh, nope, Sarah Jessica before. Parker looks like a boy <laughs> horse. Did I really? Yep. Okay, she looks like a foot. <laughs> yeah. I'm going Rachel too. I mean, who else? I mean, really, it's Rachel I, it, at the end of the day. I mean, I, I like Liz Lemon, but. Okay, so it says on New Year's Eve, you will be. I think this is a, a tough one for 2020 because I don't even know what I'm going to do this year. Uh, uh, sleeping, 
watching fireworks at a small gathering with your closest friends at a large expensive event, watching the ball drop at home. I'm always dropping the ball at home, uh, partying in Times Square, dancing at a huge party with all the people you don't know. No plans, just going with the flow or drinking. Well, drinking. Uh, well, last year I was at a club watching my favorite band in Seattle. Uh, so for right now, I have no plans. Just going with the flow. I'm drinking. Whether right. there's someone there or not, I'm drinking. Pick How is that different than any other night? TV show. I don't know. Or do, you, do you need help? Oh, this is going to be a tough one. There's three shows I love on here. Girls, Glee, and uh, Grey's Anatomy. Yep. Uh, we also have Breaking you know Bad, it, girl. Homeland, How I Met Your Mother, Law & Order SVU, The Sopranos, and House. I, I mean... I love some Breaking Bad and some Law & Order SVU, but I've also watched House like five times through, so I'm going House on that. Uh, yeah, I've seen How I Met Your Mother the most, so. Oh. oh. Mm-hmm. So, how do we want to reveal this? Well, uh, I'm going to guess that you got Chandler. Nope. Oh, huh. Suck it. Um, I, you got Joey then. Yeah, how you do win? Wow. <laughs> Who'd you get? I got. Well, why don't you guess? Phoebe. <laughs> okay, I got Chandler. <laughs> well done. You're a funny one with a heart of gold. No one really knows what you do for work, but you can rock the mysteriousness. He, all I know is he does something with the weenus. That's from one of the, from one of the episodes. I can't. Phoebe calls his weenus. No, the whole thing is about like it's the, the skin we- behind your elbow. Yeah, yeah, but it's like a report they have to do. It's the weenus. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> I haven't. Well, I marathon Friends when it came out on Netflix, and haven't watched it since. You should watch it again. We just always have it on in the background. I don't have HBO Max. Well, then the whose brigands. fault is that? Uh, well, I have a Ooh. trouble. Well, we're right. Well, we should probably stop. Yeah. That was organic, huh? <laughs> well, don't stop yet because uh, that's it for this week's edition of Namely 90s. Um, and if you want to take this BuzzFeed quiz, I might remember to post it with the episode uh, on our Twitter account at Namely 90s with a 90S. And remember, you can Twitter. find new episodes out every Monday. And uh, you can also find our personal Twitter accounts at Bishwitty and at Namely Andrew and tell us what you want us to talk about on future episodes of the podcast. You can also contact us through our website, Namely90s.com. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Schmeckle, Deezer. Did I say Schmeckle last time? Uh, tune know. in iHeartRadio and wherever you get your podcasts at. I'm Brandon and that's Andrew and we will catch you next time. <laughs>